Hey everybody, it's Peter, and this is the 2024 Kawasaki Mule Pro FXT LE 1000 Ranch Edition. It's a very long, complicated name, but this is the new Mule, and it has that new engine, new suspension, and if you watch any other video on this, that's kind of going to be the whole gist of the video. Wow, new engine, wow, new suspension, and, you know, wow, great unit. What I'm going to do is dig into the details that the other videos aren't covering. We're going to talk about that load leveling rear suspension, which is also new for 2024. We're going to talk about how that works. We're going to talk about all the little pieces that the other videos aren't showing you. So hopefully, you'll find this video worthwhile and helpful for you to decide if this is the right unit for you. Now I'm filming here at Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals, Jim Gilbert's Power Sports. We're filming right in front of Kawasaki Way. Kawasaki Way is the Kawasaki test track here at Jim Gilbert's Power Sports. It is a test track where you can take something like this out. We have another model that's done up with an enclosure. It is our demo unit. You can take it out on the trail and see what it's like for yourself. So it's pretty cool to have that. And in this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about it. So when you show up at the dealership, you'll kind of know what you need to know for when you take it out on the trail. So let's get going with this video. All right, so let's place the mule within the Kawasaki lineup. First of all, the mule is the working piece, working units in the Kawasaki lineup. However, they've done a good job of making them far more trail capable and trail enjoyable over the past number of years. And the 2024 model with this new 1000cc engine continues in that vein. It continues down that line of making it more trail capable. Now, if you know a little bit about the Kawasaki lineup, you know you've got the Mules, the Terex, and then you've got the Terex KRX 1000. The KRX 1000 is that desert off-road crazy, you know, massive suspension travel, fun unit that really isn't made for work. In fact, it doesn't even come with something like a hitch, of course, like this one does. This one can tow 2000 pounds. You've got that 1,000cc engine in here. The difference is the Mule has always been kind of the quieter, more peaceful, you know, a little bit more get out of nature and enjoy nature kind of thing, or do your working while the kids are sleeping inside the house. You can still do that outside their bedrooms. That's what the Mule always was. It was quieter. The KRX was pretty loud. So when you put the 1,000cc engine in here, a lot of the concern was, is this going to be louder? Is this going to be sort of that high strung kind of 1,000cc engine? And although the engine is shared, this is quiet. It's still relatively quiet. It's very torquey, very powerful. It's got that strong engine. It really is a difference over the previous Mule's engine. And I think a lot of you are going to like it because it really fits in that Mule lineup. You still have that traditional Mule of that relatively quiet unit that has all the power you need. But now you've stepped up with more power, you stepped it up with suspension. So we're going to start dealing with some of those individual specifics right now. Let's start at the rear. Usually I start at the front, but we're going to start with the rear and talk about that rear suspension first and work our way forward. All right, so this is a really tight shot in here. And that's just basically because I wanted to kind of cover that you still have a sort of sporty design to this. In fact, you've got the A-arms there. You've got the same idea as something like the Terex uh, lineup there that has the uh, similar uh, double, double A-arm suspension. But you've really got some beefed up areas here. And the shocks look different than they used to in the past. So first, of all, we'll talk about travel in just a second here. I got to get my cheat sheets out when I talk about all that because the uh, ride height and travel is a little different depending on the preload setting. So we'll get that out in a second here. But I just want you to look at what you have here. It's very compact. It's centralized and that's really good for uh, you know that sporty riding the good handling that kind of thing you've got a hitch here you can tow 2,000 pounds so that's like more than my camping trailer is so tons of towing capacity here we're gonna talk about the bed capacity as well but let's talk about this rear suspension we know that it's load leveling suspension we know that there's no air suspension in there but we really don't know anything else on Kawasaki's website oftentimes in the technology section they will list what goes on here but they don't so other than saying it's load leveling so what we're probably dealing with is a suspension system that allows the oil to move around in there and it will allow it to preserve ride height which allows you to have the suspension travel that you need even when it's loaded up so what that is likely doing is when you load it it will squat as you drive it around and the suspension compresses and comes back it will level itself out by changing the oil settings in that shock all on its own so there's no driver setting to level the suspension there's no air suspension to fail it's just a system that will allow itself to level itself out once you've loaded it on the weight and it does that by sort of bouncing around letting that oil move around it's very similar to i used to work with kia and hyundai vehicles the kia telluride the top end versions have that the hyundai santa cruz has that it would be a very similar system now if i'm wrong i'm sure 
sure someone will point that out. But because there is no air system on this, because there's no driver controls on this, that is very likely what we're dealing with here, which means that you really don't have any maintenance issues or anything else like that. It just works for you. Now, the point of preserving ride height is to preserve ride comfort and capabilities even when it's loaded. And that's a really key piece because you can really load this thing up. So let's talk about that capability right now. All right, I am definitely the only reviewer out here that's gonna pull a laptop up to review this unit, but let's just check out the specs for a second. So first of all, front suspension travel, 11 inches. Rear suspension travel is 10.1 inches, and that leads to overall ground clearance of 11.6 inches if you have the preload set to the standard setting. If you take the preload and set it to the max setting, you actually gain an inch of ground clearance that's 12.6 inches, which whether low height or you know standard preload or higher preload, that is a ton of ground clearance. So that's gonna be great for the trail, great for your property if you're dealing with all kinds of uneven ground. That's an insane amount of uh, ground clearance, over 12 and a half inches or 12 and a half, yeah, inches of uh, space. So 12.6 inches there. And then if you scroll down, you can talk about the bed. And that's what we're really gonna talk about here. That's why we have this view here. So the bed holds as it is. 348 pounds, which doesn't sound like it's a lot, but the bed expands out to here, which we're gonna do in a second, and then it holds 1,000 pounds. So 1,000 pounds of bed weight when you expand it out, and again, fitting 1,000 pounds in this length here, hard to do anyway. So 348 as it is, 1,000 pounds when you start bringing that weight ahead of the rear axle, which uh, matters there, and we'll talk about that. We'll show you how to do that in a second here. And then you still have the 2,000 pounds of towing capacity. So as a workhorse, this is capable. Now let's show you how to sort of break this all down into a work unit from a six passenger unit. You can change it to a three passenger unit and we'll show you how that's done right now. All right, quick disclosure. When I talk about showing you things the other videos aren't gonna show you, a lot of people would time lapse this or just do the magic of editing, go from this to that, but I'm gonna try to show you how this works and it's going to take a tiny bit of time. I want you to see how it takes in real time. Now, first of all, I don't own this unit. I don't uh, use this unit. I don't have a use for something like this personally in my life. So I'm a rookie doing this. You're gonna be able to do it quicker than I can, but it is what it is. So what you do here is you flip two little levers here. You fold the rear seat forward by pulling up on the handle like that. And then this is able to move forward, sort of. You gotta disconnect this side here, put it up like that. You gotta disconnect this side here, up like that, which is all easy to do. And then you just kind of push it out a little bit and lock that in there. You put this back down to hold it in there. And you put this over here, again, lock it out like that, put that down there. And now you have a longer bed, fold the tailgate down. So in this configuration, because that weight comes out in front of the, um, the uh, tire here, you can now put a thousand pounds on it. Keep in mind, most of that weight would be just a hair of the center line of the tire and beyond. Now that you can bring some of that weight forward, you've got the full thousand pound capacity, but that's not all. This is also a dump bed. And I think I'm gonna make a quick little edit uh, to get the camera set up to show you the dump bed as well. Okay, the edit is made, and basically what I wanna do is make sure that I have the roof in the shot here. So there's a clip on this side here, which I can pull out like that. There's also one on that side there. That's important to show the dump bed because you have to lift this roof over and fold it there. So if you can't see what it did, it just folded back on itself. Now you've got an open setting here over the bed. First of all, what that does is a couple things. If this is open, you can load along this rear rail extra high if you had to. You've got some tie down bars there. I'm sure they have some rules about don't stack it crazy high, but the point is, you have the ability to put a higher. And then this is a dump bed. So you just lift it up like that. It is it assisted by a gas strut. Now I'll tell you, it's not the lightest dump bed. It's not super counterbalanced. If you have weight in there, you're not gonna be able to do what I just did. There is a power setting there. If you have two guys working with you, you can help yourself with that. But it depends on what you're dumping out. If you're dumping out something that's not crazy, crazy heavy, you can do it, I can do it um, You know, on your own, that kind of thing. But if it's heavy, you can get a power assist uh, setting that is quite slow, but it does do this for you to tilt it. And if you're taking something like logs or something like that, uh, especially if you're out on your own, you're going to want something like that power assist because again, it's not the lightest thing in the world. It comes down nice and easy there. You can uh, you know, still use it as a bed, but lifting it, that's something to keep in mind. Not hard to do, just uh, a little bit more weight uh, involved, especially if there's you know, like that much weight in the back, up to a thousand pounds. If you put 500 pounds back here, there's no chance that I'm lifting it at all. With two guys, you need guys bigger than me. So just something to be aware of that you can add that component there to help you with that dump bed. 
All right, so we've got it back in the six passenger capacity here, and that kind of makes sense, right? If you're doing work and you've got the bed in this space, you can only find no more than two people to work with you. But once you make it back in sort of the play setting, it's no problem filling up with six people, right? So that's how that works. All right, so as we've got that back here, we're gonna take a look at a few unique features in the back and a few unique features in the front. So this one's pretty simple. You've got a flat bench seat here. It is nice and wide, and you've got shoulder belts across the uh, entire thing. So if you want shoulder belts, everybody's got one. Uh, and a good protection from the back uh, headrest from your, uh, not headrest, but the uh, cargo area. You've got a good gate there to keep you safe from whatever's in the back. Couple little things that I just think go unnoticed that I think are important. So you've got two uh, 12 volt ports down there. Now they're linked on the same circuit with 120 watt total. So if you have a high power device, you're gonna only use one, but a lot of lower power devices, you can use both at the same time to a limit of 120 watts. So not a super high powerful, but again, good enough to have and really good enough to do something like charge a phone, charge a laptop, charge, I mean, not that you're taking a laptop with you, I'm the only guy that does that. But the point is you have a slot here uh, to hold a phone and then it has a, a little cutout there to fit the charge port, which can come down to those 12 volt ports. So what's cool about that is you can have your phone centrally mounted here. Whether you're the driver, you can reach through there. There's a little bit of a spot by the seat belts you can reach through there, or your passengers can use that because you also have a spot up front with 12 volt ports there. But you got a cup holder, you've got a spot to put your phone, just kind of good stuff here. Nice grippy floor with a little bit of a rise there. So the middle person still has a relatively flat floor to put their feet. And again, just the minimal amount of drain holes, enough to get the water out, but not to bring any in if you're going out on the trails or muddy or whatever. Same thing in the front here, but there are some differences. So this again, a three person bench seat, but you can kind of see here, hopefully the camera's catching it, there's a little bit of a raise between there. And what that means is that the outboard front seating positions, they are contoured to fit you better. So although this is a bench seat, it is a very comfortable bench seat because it is contoured to fit you. You've got a lot of space in there. And again, the outboard seating positions do have that. So jumping in here, let's just look at a couple things here. Your parking brakes on the outside, there's a cup holder there. It is a tilt wheel, so you can move that. You've got little cubbies there with drain holes in there on the both sides here. So that's this side as well, a bigger cubby hole there with a cup holder there. There is a uh, glove box down there that's semi-sealed. It's not super, super, super waterproof, but it should keep everything dry for what you need. And again, the same thing here with your 12 volt ports. You've got two of them here and they are on the same 120 watt sort of total circuit there. So a single high power device or multiple low power devices, not a big deal. You can put them both in there and that's kind of handy. Again, you have a space to put your phone up front here, but if we just take a look back here on the driver's seat, you can see that you can easily reach that slot back there behind your seatbelt. There's you know, easily a hand width here. Let's just go fully wide angle, excuse the view a little bit, but you can see there's a lot of room there uh, to reach back there if you wanted to do that. So a couple things I really like. Let's start this thing up because again, it is relatively quiet. Now I'm mic'd, the unit is not. We're still in wide angle here, but you can see I'm not raising my voice at all. So again, to be fair, the microphone's much closer to me than this. It's not an exact um, science the way I'm filming this with the audio, but I can tell you that you can have a conversation not just with the front passenger beside you, but with your rear passengers quite easily, both at idle and while you're driving. So that's a big feature to have. If you're gonna take six people with you, you wanna be able to talk to them about what you're seeing, what you're doing, that kind of thing. Have some fun. The point of this is to spend time together. And if you can't talk to somebody, that's kind of taken away from the experience. So a couple things I really like. This um, display here is very basic. It's been used by Kawasaki for a while. It's not the most advanced one that you get the, in the KRX 1000, but it's very good work related. And what I like about it, let's just zoom in here a little bit. Let's just zoom in again. Again, the glare is playing with the camera here. I have no issues reading this in person with my real eyes, but the camera is going to have issues. So down at the very bottom there, we're just gonna to try to move around a little bit to fight that glare. Uh, trip A, trip B, an hour meter and the odometer is all you have down there as well as a clock. You have a four wheel drive display. Now what I like about this four wheel drive display is it's currently in two wheel drive. If I hit the button over here, which I'm gonna do, it doesn't always engage over here. And that's good because what this does is it only actually engages, let's just put it in drive for a second. There we go. It only actually engages if the four wheel drive is engaged. And if you're out on the trail, just because you hit the switch doesn't mean you have four wheel drive engaged or two wheel drive engaged. It shows you the true engagement of your system right there, which is something that I kind of like. So we're gonna put it back in two wheel drive. It doesn't quite pop out. We'll just get it in gear again. There we go. Now it's definitely in two wheel drive. So just kind of nice to have fuel gauge there as well. Your gear indicators are over there. We got it in uh, neutral and we've got the parking brake on and then you've got a um, reverse light just above that there. 
uh, in the, uh, you can kind of sort of see it in the R right there. So that's your gauge cluster. Jumping over here, there's the lights. I want to show you those lights here in a second. We're going to leave it running because there is something unique about them. Four-wheel drive button and then the dif differential lock. We talked about the winch, I think, over here. We'll show you the winch in just a second. You also have a remote for the winch, which plugs in right here, which means you can stand away from the unit and, uh, oops, I went the wrong way there. You can stand away from the unit here and control the winch from not having to sit in that driver's seat if that's what you want to do. So you have options there to control the things you need to. Now let's talk about the headlights. Let's just leave it running. We'll go around the front here, make sure the parking brake's on. We're in neutral. All right. As we jump outside here, I will point out that the doors here, they're not plasticky like some of the other units. They're very good. So headlighting, this is an important thing and it does kind of show here. Let me see if I, I'm a wide angle. Let's just zoom in a little closer. You can see that the outside is incandescent and the inside is your LED. Now, when I put it to high beams, the LED will come fully. Let's just see if I can reach around here and do that. Oh boy, uh, there we go. High beams are on. So then you have the full LED light lit with high beams as well. Now, why would you want LEDs and incandescence. Well, remember, this is a working unit. LEDs are usually preferable for overall visibility. That whiter color light is closer to daylight in color, and that means that your eyes can identify what you're seeing better because your brain recognizes things in that daylight type color. So if you're driving along the trail and if it's a rabbit or a rock, you're gonna be able to tell what it is um, with those LED lights even at night. Now, why would you not want dual LEDs? Well, this is a working unit. If you are plowing snow, the incandescent lights create heat. That means these will melt when you're in the snow and those ones will not. And that's why you would want incandescent lights as well. Overall ground clearance here, you can see there's that worn winch. You've got that 11.6 to 12.6 inches of ground clearance. You've got that skid plate kind of in the front there. This is a fully capable unit, whether you're on the trail or working around your own property. You've got the nice brush guard up front. That's all standard equipment. So everything you're seeing on this unit is standard equipment. So let's talk about who this unit is for. Well, in the past, the mule was workhorse and it was capable of trail stuff. Now I feel like this is the kind of perfect all around unit for everything you need. That extra ground clearance, that improved suspension is going to make a difference on the trail, but it's also going to make a difference when you're working. So we talked about that load leveling suspension. Whether you've got this loaded up with six people or with two people and a whole bunch of gear, the load leveling suspension allows you to preserve the ride height, which allows you to preserve the proper suspension travel, the proper suspension feel, regardless of if there's weight in the back or if there's not. So it's going to ride very well for what it is. Again, still work capable unit. If you have work that you need to get done, 2,000 pounds of towing capacity, 348 pounds in the bed as is, 1,000 pounds in the bed uh, when it's extended out, you've got all the working capability that you could possibly want, but that new engine also makes it more fun. So you can justify that new engine for the capability, but it makes it more fun. And what we thought would happen would be, if it has the KRX engine, we thought it would be noisier, it's not, which means it's quiet, which means the whole point of this unit is preserved. If you have this loaded with six people, you can have a conversation with them. You can discuss things. You can hang out with people and truly hang out with them. This is really a good unit, but it doesn't stop here. Let me know if you want to see this with accessories because we have another model here that's done up with accessories and that's really where the mules come into their own. As this is, it's everything I could want and more. I have no need for this much working type stuff for my property, but the ability to take six people on the trail quietly with all kinds of power, that really appeals to me. The ability to do any work I could want to do, the ability to pull this out, to pull my camping trailer around my property, that would be useful because I can't do that with my ATV as it is. So it really is a do everything thing. And like I said, the one we have has a windshield, a full enclosure. You can put a, a plow on this. You can really make it useful for four seasons. You can put uh, tracks on these, I believe. You can do all kinds of things to do anything you want, to turn this into anything you want. And you'll have one unit that does it all. And that's really the benefit of this. This engine is really good and reliable. It's quiet, it's smooth, it's torquey. It does everything you want. So again, who is this for? The person who needs something to do it all, who wants to take everyone. It is a little bit wider unit, so there are certain trails you may not be able to go on, but for the most part, you can go anywhere and do anything with something like this. And there's pretty good value in it as a base model, which leaves you some room to accessorize it up to make it the do everything side by side that you need. 
If you have questions, if there's things that I didn't answer, this is new to me as well, and I'm still learning about it. So if there's something you need to know, let me know in the comments section below, and I'll continue to get you answers. And of course, you can come try it out for yourself on Kawasaki Way here at Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals in Fredericton, New Brunswick. This is the number one volume Kawasaki dealer in the country, and what better place to try it out than on Kawasaki Way. Thanks everybody for watching. I want to thank Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals for giving me full access to their entire product line. And if you have questions, let me know in the comments below, and make sure you subscribe because we'll have a whole lot more coming. Thanks everybody for watching.